Hello and welcome to Encompass Live, the premier session of Encompass Live. Um, this is Nebraska Library Commission's new weekly online event that we'll be holding starting this year, 2009. Um, we're going to be covering throughout our different sessions that we have all sorts of NLC activities and any library topics presented by NLC staff, sometimes by guests. Um, could be anything, presentations, interviews, book reviews, um, training sessions, Q&As, anything we can come up with for you. Um, I am Krista Burns, OCLC coordinator at the Library Commission, and I'll be um, kind of hosting these. Um, to start off our Encompass Live, we are going to kick it off with an introduction to the Library Commission, who we are, what we do, why we're here, um, stuff you may already know and stuff you might not know. And we're going to do it in two parts because we have such a large uh, number of departments here. Um, and this morning we're going to have four people doing, um, talking about their departments, what they do. And then next week, next Wednesday, there'll be the second part of this. Um, so we're going to get into the basics of what we do, who we are, and what we do here. And we're going to start off with Rod Wagner, the director of the Library Commission. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what we do here. Go ahead, Rod. All right. Hi. Um, I have the honor of uh, starting things off uh, this morning with uh, some comments, some basics, really, about the, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission. And I'm going to be referring to um, some resources that uh, I'm sure many are familiar with, and that's the uh, uh, Library Commission's uh, homepage and some things that can be found there that will uh, uh, make reference to a few things I'm going to uh, talk about. Just let me know when you want to go live. Just let me know when you want to go to the app share. Okay. So, why, well, Crystal, why don't you go ahead and uh, click on the uh, of the Library Commission's website, because uh, we'll we'll go from there. Well, first of all, um, just some basics about the Library Commission to to get us started, since we're uh, we're talking about what is the Library Commission. The Library Commission is Nebraska's state library agency. Uh, it is. Uh, unique in Nebraska, but every state uh, has a state library agency. Uh, there are lots of differences among state libraries, state library agencies, <clears throat> but every state uh, does have one. And the nature of uh, Nebraska's state library agency is that it is a independent uh, agency within Nebraska state government within the executive branch of the of Nebraska state government. Um, there are there is a, one state library that is actually under the legislature, and that's in Arizona. But predominantly, uh, state libraries are part of the executive branch. Um, we have a staff of 45 people, and we also have uh, the good fortune of a number of uh, volunteer workers who do us lots of good help. And we have a commission, that's our governing board, uh, six members, uh, each appointed by the governor. They serve three-year terms. They can be appointed to a second term. These uh, folks are public representatives, uh, the watchfulness of the citizen, that's, uh, that's their role, and that's one of the uh, terms used uh, in regard to Nebraska state government. Uh, they uh, meet regularly. They have a meeting every other week, and uh, in fact, they have a meeting coming up uh, this, this uh, Friday morning. Um, some... Um, well, one other thing about uh, the nature of the Library Commission, uh, it is an independent agency. Uh, within uh, state government language, uh, there are code agencies and non-code agencies. Code agencies are the ones that are directly under the governor. That is, the governor appoints the uh, heads of those agencies. 
and they are directly accountable to the governor. Uh, many others, like the Library Commission, uh, are boards and commissions that have uh, different types of uh, governing arrangements. Uh, the Library Commission has its six-member commission. Uh, other independent agencies may have some other, other uh, type of, uh, of a governing body. Uh, so uh, we're indirect in that our commission members are appointed by the governor. Uh, but the uh, agency director is appointed and accountable to the uh, library commission members. Uh, some of you may also recall that the library commission uh, back in 2001 celebrated its centennial year, centennial anniversary year. Um, so it has been uh, in existence for a long, long while and obviously with uh, many changes over the years. Uh, it's much different today than it was back uh, when it was uh, originated, but it still has uh, many of the same uh, purposes, and that is to uh, promote, develop, uh, coordinate library services. I want to mention um, one very significant uh, year uh, uh, along the way, and there, there have been many milestones along the way, but in 1972, um, new legislation made some significant changes in the Library Commission. Uh, in 1972, what was then the Nebraska Public Library Commission became the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, and that, uh, the significance of that uh, is that the commission was given responsibility for promotion, development, and coordination of library services for all types of Nebraska libraries. We work with uh, certainly the public libraries, uh, also the schools, the colleges and universities, and special libraries. Uh, very characteristic of, of Nebraska libraries is the uh, uh, coordination, the uh, uh, efforts uh, to collaborate among libraries. Uh, also in 1972 was the enactment of legislation that uh, created the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse, uh, a very significant activity uh, to uh, give the commission or the clearinghouse as a division of the commission responsibility for uh, collecting and making available uh, Nebraska state government publications. So in 72, that, that uh, changed uh, uh, some of the governing statutes for the Library Commission. Um, going to the uh, About the Commission uh, page, uh, I'll make reference to that next. Uh, there you will get a much more detailed listing of the commission's services and uh, my my colleagues here and in future sessions will be referring to those in more detail um, there is when you go to the um, uh, when you click on the a brief descri description of services you'll come to the commission's statement about mission and that mission statement comes from Nebraska statutes. Um, in Nebraska statutes, the language states that the commission is responsible for promotion, development, and coordination of library and information services. Actually, it doesn't say information. That's, that's a bit of an expansion that we made uh, here at the agency. And in our own planning documents, we've, we've added over the years um, an additional statement about advocacy for the library and information service needs of all Nebraskans. So uh, that's, that's a, an adopted statement of the Library Commission referring to its uh, central mission and purpose. Um, more recently, we've also added uh, two primary goals. Um, Goal one uh, is the uh, all Nebraskans will have improved access to enhanced library and information services provided and facilitated by qualified library personnel. 
boards and supporters with knowledge, skills, abilities, and attitudes necessary to provide excellent library and information services. And the second goal uh, concerns the technology piece. Nebraska libraries will have appropriate technology to access and deliver online library and information services. Those goals are part of our current long-range plan that we prepare uh, every five years for the uh, Institute of Museum and Library Services at the federal level uh, and that we are required to uh, uh, present along with other assurances and so forth uh, for receipt of federal LSTA monies. And speaking of uh, monies, that's, uh, that's a central part of what we'd like to uh, mention as part of this basic introduction to the Commission. The commission receives its funding through the uh, Nebraska legislature. Um, the appropriation process uh, is cyclical. We have two year uh, budgets, the biennium budget. We're in the second year now. Uh, today begins the uh, 101st uh, legislature, first session. Uh, that has just convened this morning. And one of the uh, major activities of the legislature will be the uh, uh, approval of a uh, state budget for the next two years. And since we are in such uh, uncertainty about uh, the economy, the recession, and so forth, it will be an especially interesting session. Um, Another interesting activity that's going on uh, that concerns us because a part of our funding also comes from the federal government, the LSTA monies. Um, we're in doubt about uh, funding for this current uh, year as well as the future. Uh, but also, some many uh, uh, of you may be aware that the um, uh, discussions in Washington will uh, result in some major federal funding to attempt to get the economy uh, started, revived, and so forth. And there is a proposal that's being promoted to uh, include library construction funds in a uh, major economic stimulus package. So we're hopeful that that may uh, happen. And we've been getting good responses from many Nebraska libraries about the projects they may be uh, prepared to begin on somewhat uh, short notice. Um, I'm going to stop there because we have some other uh, people here to talk about their areas. But, uh, we'll have, we hope to have some time later for uh, questions, and uh, we'll be happy to take those up then. Let, let me stop now, and I, I believe we're going okay. next to uh, Beth. Thank you. Hi, this is Beth Goebel. Um, first, I'd like to ask, did you have any questions for Rod? Before Does anybody have any questions right now? If so, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll just go on with government information services then. I uh, said so I'm Beth Goebel, uh, and I'm part of a team of four people at the Library Commission. So um, here we are. Um, there's that, yeah, there's the, we're, we're the bleeding edge here is, is our team is the only one that I forced yesterday to stand up against the wall and have our pictures taken. So I'm Beth and Lori Sailors is next. Uh, she works mainly with the federal documents and Nebraska memories. Bonnie Hensel is our state document staff assistant and Jennifer Rampey works with all of our clearinghouse stuff and I'll tell you in a bit what the clearinghouse means and she also provides administrative support uh, so she may be the voice you hear when you call in on our 800 number. 
So I think what I'll do is I'll just go through uh, the high points of what we do and kind of tell you which person is involved in most of that. So um, if you'd like to start, Kristen, by just taking us to that Publications Clearinghouse website. We've got Krista driving for us today, for which we're ever so grateful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think. Uh, probably. Is that one fun? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Rod mentioned 1972 being a banner year for the Library Commission, and it was the year that the statute set up the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse. And uh, our main responsibility is to provide government information services for everybody in Nebraska. Um, we loan out many materials to mark a collection. Uh, we have a lot of them online now. And anybody, you don't have to be have a library card or anything like that. We actually do direct loan, uh, not only within Nebraska, but to other states. So um, one of the main things that statute told us to do is become part of a federal depository program. So I don't know if you can find that link a little further down, Krista. Yeah, there? right. Um, there was a time when we collected more than 60% of the publications in the government. This is the program operated by the government uh, printing office uh, in Washington, D.C. We've now greatly reduced that. Uh, thank, we benefit greatly from having our regional depository right up the street from us. So now we collect a pretty small amount of material, and a lot of this is online. And um, Lori Sailors and Jennifer Rampy are the two people who work primarily with uh, getting those documents in and cataloging um, some of them uh, with hot links usually for our online catalog. So we can get back out of that one. Uh, I wanted to spend a little more time talking about the state documents program. And if Krista, if you could just go to what the electronic state documents program link. Um, there. This is something that primarily Bonnie Hensel is the one who works on this, is that statute told us to uh, start a depository program, which we did in 1972, and originally we would send uh, microfiche copies of publications. Uh, Basically, what we, we do is try to stay in touch with someone in, with every Nebraska state agency and request that they send us copies of anything that's multiply produced and intended for public distribution. So that can be annual reports. It can be special reports that they did, uh, you know, that, for example, uh, Beatrice State Developmental Center has been in the news a lot lately. Any uh, special reports, legislative reports relating to that, we would try to get. Uh, we collect those in print. Uh, we no longer do the microfiche program. We do um, this electronic state documents program. So um, what Bonnie does is um, we still get the publications in print. Of, copy goes in the collection. We still try to send one to the State Historical Society for the archives. Then a uh, selected number of those, um, she either scans them or downloads them from the agency's website and puts them in, uh, if you want to just click real quick on that state government publications online link. We have uh, really an enormous list. This is arranged alphabetically, but what it is, you can just pick letter of your choice and just click on that um, of state of agencies you can then click on just click on any of them um, they probably don't have a lot of stuff but this is um, you, most of these links are still links directly to the state agency, but in some cases, uh, Bonnie has been scanning so key nice. publications. That one is probably... It's off their website still. Yeah, that's still off their website. Um, key publications, particularly things like annual reports, Bonnie is now downloading to our own website. You want to just back out of that one? Um, we probably don't want to spend a lot of time looking for one, but I can just tell you that um, what was our fish distribution program is now an electronic distribution program. So we can just back up a bit more. 
and um, so she's creating um, files for these on our own server and, and our pledge to people is that these will remain current. In other words, we don't have to worry about these being taken off of an agency server if they decide they don't want to have that particular publication up online anymore. Um, it will stay on the Library Commission server. And in a lot of cases, if it's something that, like an annual report, it's something that's a serial publication, that there's going to be a new one every year, um, she's making an index page. And um, if we go to the Library Commission online catalog link, um, and you don't need to go through all this, Krista, but mm -hmm. if you were to type in the word epidemiology, for example, you would come to a link for something oh, called from the Department of Health and Human Services called the Epidemiology Report. I'm, I'm using that one because I had to use it as an example recently, but what you would see at the bottom of our catalog record is a hot link to this index page. So my message, I guess, to any library can, can participate in this. We're no longer limited to the 14 depository libraries that we originally had, and you can back out of this one now, Krista. Um, any of you that's interested in signing up um, to get these, uh, we put a look, if you just, you, you have the URL of this, this website, um, you can use our, if you go down to WhatsApp doc, further. We've converted what was a bi-monthly newsletter to a blog now, and um, Jennifer Rampy is the one who uh, who put out our WhatsApp doc publication. Uh, we're not going to do it as a bi-monthly newsletter anymore. It's going to be a series of blog postings like this. So uh, this is, uh, you can subscribe to this via RSS, or you can just go to it anytime you want, and you will see uh, new publications. And should you decide you wanted to have this in your own online catalog, you can use the information that you see here. There's an OCLC number, uh, and you can you can go ahead and actually download the catalog record. We catalog everything that we get in OCLC, so you would be able to add the link for that. And if you look at that second one down in the Spring Seed Guide, you see that the file name ends in HTML. Just click on that real quick. That's one of those index pages I was mentioning. So if you were to download that into your catalog, you'd only have to do it once because that one URL will stay the same, and every time we get a new seed guide, um, it would be added to this page. So just wanted to let you know about that. And if you want to just go all the way back to that list of links, Krista, uh, just want to quickly mention some other projects that we work on, um, our documents team. Uh, we help out with Nebraska Memories. This is primarily a network services project, and I'm sure you're going to get a whole session about this later. But Lori Sailors um, goes out and makes site visits. So we, we're hoping that there are many of you out there that are interested in participating in Nebraska Memories, and you could contact either me or Deborah Dragos about that. And someone would come out and visit you to talk about what you might have in your collection that we could use for Nebraska Memories. And we have an offer right now uh, where we would come out and scan some of those up to 50 items for you. And that's what Lori would do. She would come back out with a portable scanner and scan up to 50 of your items. And then um, we would get those put into Nebraska Memories for you. So uh, that's a, a really fun project for Lori to work on. And we're really happy to be able to help out with that. Yeah, and then uh, I think the last one is just, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we are, our team uh, works on what we call the archives here at the Library Commission, and uh, our archives has material in it relating to Nebraska library history, and we've done some scanning of, some of you may remember our, centen our centennial, uh, the website relating to that, and this was sort of an offshoot of that, uh, that was a, that one. Um, we've scanned some other materials, like our own biennial report. We keep uh, important records from the regional library systems here at the Library Commission. Um, so my team works on kind of keeping that archives in order and, and tidy. And that's probably, oh, I guess the one thing I didn't mention, but Lisa's going to say a whole lot more, is we do work closely. We're, we're really part of the whole information services uh, service here at the Library Commission. I spend about 10 hours a week on the reference desk. Uh, Bonnie Hensel also works on the reference desk. 
um, various ones of us work on some things that he's just going to talk to you about with the FAQ. So um, you'll hear more about that from Lisa. Okay. Uh, Dave, you're next. Um, first, does anybody have any questions for Beth? Something in text. No? Okay. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Dave Wortley, and um, I'm with the Talking Book and Braille Service. We're blessed with a staff of 10 and a half FTEs and about 50 volunteers uh, that, that help us out. Talking Book and Braille Service provides free talking books, magazines, playback equipment, and Braille, as well as movies that are, that are described. That is a have a second soundtrack that uh, tells uh, the audience the costume, the character, the settings, the action, things that they would miss if they can't see the screen. So those are called audio description movies. We're like a public library in what we, what we offer to people. And uh, we're partnering with the Library of Congress that has a division called the National Library Service. And we're part of a nationwide network of cooperating libraries, and we serve the entire state. I wanted to show you the application form. It's online. Like a good bureaucrat, I think uh, everything begins with an application form. And this application form uh, page has one for individuals, has one for facilities, and a special section for schools to help them guide through uh, an extra step that schools have to go through to uh, to sign up for the first year of service with us. Now, we do send out paper forms of applications to, to all the libraries that ask for them, and we have to do that. And the other thing to remember is you can print it off and use one of these online forms just as well, but we can't accept electronic signatures, and we need the original autographs for the, uh, the certifying signatures so you would need to print off and then sign for us. Would you click on individual application form, Krista? This is what uh, it looks like. So we need to know the person's name and, and address and contact information and so on. And then as you scroll down, we need to know why they need service. Are they blind? Are they visually impaired? Do they have a reading disability, uh, some form of dyslexia? Uh, we do serve some people who are deafblind, and uh, physical disabilities could be wide-ranging, but it means that for some reason they can't hold the book or turn its pages. Stroke is a common reason, or arthritis, or a tremor would be a reason. The conditions could be temporary, or they could be permanent. So if you have a, an accident and you have your both arms in a, in a cast, then you would qualify for service. Good eye surgery, but you're going to get better, you would qualify while you're recuperating, for instance. A librarian can sign for all the, um, the reasons except for reading disability, and that has to be a medical doctor, so it has to do with the way the federal guidelines are written. Mm -hmm. But we do appreciate when you good folks refer people to us, and when you sign the application forms to enable that to happen. They can also have the form signed by their eye care professional, a nurse, a doctor, a rehab counselor, uh, most medical professionals or counselors can sign the applications as well. Um, so let's go back. I wanted to show you some things that... Um, oh, you want to go back to other to, to the camera. I'm holding up something called Talking Book Topics. Talking Book Topics, I know you can't read it, but it <laughs> comes out six times a year from the Library of Congress. It's a free magazine that lists the new talking books that came from their vendors to us here in Nebraska. And people love to get this in the mail. The, these are the, many of these are bestsellers. Um, there's some books in here about opera. There's books in here about um, uh, also the um, Westerns and Mysteries and Romances. Um, we have Hitler's beneficiaries thunder racial war in the Nazi welfare state for the, the story of World War II. We have books called Happiness, a history. 
Here is one on um, cooking up a storm with Stan Stern, who was a, a teenager who wrote a cookbook. One on skin cells. There's one on uh, the, uh, the musician Stravinsky. Anyway, about four or five hundred new books get announced every six months. I mean, every six weeks. People love to get this in the mail, and they just they go through it and they call us up and say, "Oh, and they order by RC number." And, they have long lists of books to, to request. Our counterpart is NLC Interchange, which is our newsletter. It's about the library plus the new books from our own studios. We called our studios the Prairie Lane Studios, and volunteers work with paid staff to record uh, books and magazines of Nebraska interest. And we announce these in our newsletter. Some of the ones we've announced recently are Calling Me Home by Patricia Herms. I think it's Hermes, and uh, she wrote for young for young readers, grade three to six. We did the cleanup by Sean Doolittle, um, Nebraska author living in Omaha. It's one of his uh, mystery suspense books. Prayer Whispers is by Scott Miller. He's a school teacher. Wrote about Nebraska history for uh, well, these are grades four to seven. It's about homesteaders who pioneered along the uh, Niagara River. We recorded America, Our Next Chapter, Tough Questions, Straight Answers by Senator Cagle, and that's going to be popular. At any rate, our Nebraska books and magazines are announced in NLC Interchange. It kind of goes along with the talking book topics. Um, now, the mainstay of our system still is our cassette player. I'm going to hold this up, but it's a big clunker. It was designed in the early 1980s, and it's a workhorse of the agency, I mean, of, of the program last uh, 20, 25 years. It, it has served us well, and these machines go out and come back again. They're cleaned and repaired, refurbished. They have a long life. These can be tempty, has come to an end, and cassettes are simply over. We're the last major market for audio cassettes anymore. I'm going to I hold up one of our three books. This is a bet in this book can hold almost 200 pages of text, which is a remarkable amount of material. Uh, now, there's a future for the player because we're going to move to digital um, flash memory cards and books on cassette plus new books on flash memory. But even after the transition to digital, we'll need these machines because Library of Congress were using the cassette still for the magazines for the foreseeable future. Uh, would you click on the player description? I'll go to that scene. Sure and provide these digital players. Here they are. You can see the digital players are about a third the size of the cassette machine I held up. Uh, they have very long batteries, about 20 in that little blue case. The cartridge is um, uh, one cartridge will hold an entire book. Um, they're, very, they're very durable. They are reusable by it would like, but the unit cost is dropping and I think it's going to be a good future for those. Now, we're going to start seeing these players um, late winter, early spring. First person in line will be the veterans, and we will um, serve them first by law, veterans. We hope for a four-year transition, but they're talking in terms of, of a six-year transition before everyone who, who um, needs a digital player will fall over, but we, we will go through a transition, and we think people have good, a good spirit about it and goodwill, and they will be patient when they need to. We, we start getting our digital books. Um, the books are about all, it's the same footprint on the shelf as a cassette player but um, a little bit thinner, and they'll go through the mail as free matter. But there's another way that they can get service, and would you go to the download pilot mm -hmm. site, mm -hmm. Crystal? Mm -hmm. Oh, I gave you uh, some mm -hmm. key in. This is up and going right now. People today can download talking books into a digital player that they had to buy on their own because the federal program player is still being manufactured on its way to a name and a password. And beyond that, only authorized players can, um, can access the, the books. To do that, they're very concerned about copyright from that. Um, it would be a capital A. Did you see that? Oh, that matters? Okay. That matters. <laughs> it's sensitive. There. There it is. Uh, you, uh, now, uh, 
You can search by authors. Our, all titles are all subjects. That over 13,000 are there now. I click on Recently at Highlander, the McLean Family, book three in the series by Hawkins. Oh, the Secret of Robber's Cave is another one. It's like a young adult, well, younger than that, a grade school reader, uh, grade three to six. Anyway, people will be able to look at the new books or search the larger collection, 13,000 uh, selections right now, and about 37 different magazine titles are offered as well. We have about 30 Nebraskans who are now doing direct downloads, but um, last October we had zero, so it is growing, and we think that it will become um, old, a more key player, not as important as books through the mail uh, from us, but still people who can handle high-speed connection on the internet, can handle the computer part of it, will be able to do direct downloads 24-7 instead of waiting for us to respond through the mail. I want to show you one more device before, before I relinquish my time, and I need to have the camera on. Mm -hmm. I'm holding this up. It's called a Victor Reader. We bought this. It's one of the few commercial players that is authorized to use the NLS website. And this costs $300. And it comes with a, a you have to buy a flash memory card and a card reader. So $350 is what you would expect to pay. But this is a, it, it's a good, uh, a very nice device. And this is one that's most popular with, uh, with Nebraskans. The other units that they can also buy is one called the Level Star Icon, and one called the Braille Plus. Plus Mobile Manager, which is put out by the American Printing House for the Blind. They're more expensive, but they also do more things. They're more like a PDA as well as a, a digital player. At any rate, we're excited about what's coming with digital books. We recognize the era of cassettes has drawn to a close. So uh, we'll see something happening uh, by early spring and in, in books in people's hands by uh, spring, summer. Thank you. That's, that's my presentation. Okay. Any questions right now for Dave? <laughs> Just a minute from the out. When did you say they were coming uh, out? Dana asked in the text oh. chat, when did you say they were coming out? We expect to see the, the first books by late winter and the first players by early spring. Great. Okay. Any other questions for Dave? Great. Well, I'll take up the last bit of the morning. I'm Lisa Kelly, and I have the Information Services Agency, and for most of your libraries, this is a service that you're very familiar with, reference and interlibrary loan. However, ours takes a little different twist because we serve librarians and state employees, so part of our reference interview sometimes is who are you, and a public library would never dream of asking that, so we are, um, we certainly want to have everyone who calls us get to their local public library, but if we're the right place for, their, for people to come, we want to answer their questions as well, so you may notice that our reference interview is a little more invasive than others, so um, that is why. Um, I have a team of seven people and no picture, but Beth and my team are really good close cousins to one another, and we work closely with one another. We are available always, eight to five, Monday through Friday. There's always somebody at the reference desk, so we have people who go out to consult and, and should do so, but we always have somebody here, so if you're feeling like you can't catch anybody, you will always find somebody at the reference desk. And sometimes we are asked if we have a direct 800 number, and we don't. But if you call the main desk and ask for reference or interlibrary loan, you'll be sent down to our desk where you will hear a live voice. Um, I sometimes say we're a librarian's library. So we collect things in our collection here that are helpful to you as librarians or media specialists about buildings, programs, serving special communities, Hispanics, older, commu older um, citizens. So that is here for you. And we collect library science journals and really are protective of keeping those long runs of them journal. So those are here for you. We'll check out entire issues. And so let's go to um, the OPAC site if we can. And Beth has shown you this link before, but I want to point out some things that we have in our collection here. Um, it would be down towards the bottom. Probably the standard search. Um, this is our, our public catalog, and you'll find it from our front page. Some of you want to use videos for your trustees or DVDs. We're only buying DVDs now. Maybe you need board certification. You can actually search for items here and look at the really handy chat box on the right-hand side. In the hours that we're open, if you're having trouble finding something, Julie's there right now, and you can chat with her. She's at the desk, so I can be here right now. So look at... Um, this is all this is all it takes for you to chat is just to type something in there and think I'm looking for videos or DVDs on how to plan a meeting or trustee training. We can get right back to you and look how quick Julie was. I knew she would be fabulous. And she's also watching our program right now. So um, another service that we provide is interlibrary loan and as I look at the list 
there are about six of you listening today that use our interlibrary loan services. And I would just like to, uh, we provide interlibrary loan for any library in the state that isn't able to do that independently. So we currently have over 400 public libraries and school libraries who use us for services. So it is always helpful, and I'll say this again, to say who you are and where you're calling from. Some voices I know, but mm -hmm. we have two people named Shirley who sound awfully alike. <laughs> Shirley from Palmer and Shirley from Laurel. And, and this is Beth saying, I have nixed the two Shirley's up and place requests for the wrong Shirley yes. sometimes. So you can never give us enough information. We are really happy to know who you are every time you call because we'll always try to say our name whenever we answer the phone as well. Mm -hmm. And Chris is showing you the form right now. This is just one way to request items from us. You can also send us an email at, um, at that particular link there if you have a long list of things because I can attest to all of our handwriting being really dreadful that it's great for you to email a list to us. Uh, so we can do journals, we can do books. We have done some subject requests. I just did one yesterday for Piggy Banks and John Glenn. So um, give us a call. We are happy to help. And the people who are answering the phones here have lots of library experience and can ask really great questions if you're struggling. We want to be your backup for any kind of question that you have. Don't hesitate to call us. It's an 800, call away, 800 number call away or an email or a chat now if that's something that you like to do. And let's see. That contact page. Yeah, let's go to that. <clears throat> On the front of our commission webpage is the lips button. Becky Pasco likes to refer to that, to click on the lips. And so this is... These are the numbers of ways that you can contact us, and hopefully this will come up soon. It gives our address, it gives parking directions, it gives driving directions. Um, there it is. When it gets here. And there's a picture of Beth. We wanted you to know that we're really real people. Um, if you're an I ammer, and that is our um, address to contact us in any of those means to contact or you can just use that particular widget, which we just showed from the catalog. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, Julie there. And you'll notice that you're anonymous when you click there. So sometimes you may not want to reveal who you are. You may want to ask a question. And sometimes people feel silly asking a question. But you could also say, this is Jan from the Weeping Water Public Library. Help me. I need assistance. And we would be right there to help you. And again, see how fast that was? <laughs> Only open, only available the hours that we're open, but we hope that that accommodates most of you who have questions. So feel free to give us a try and chat with us. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, I'm going to switch to a couple of new services to end up here. If you'd go to our book club kit, um, that, that link right there. Um, something was suggested by Alana, who's in the network services team. She said, why don't you collect stacks of books, singular titles, and I thought that's a great idea, and we're finally getting some good service here, or people who are using the service, and I, I just admonish you in a time when perhaps Huskers and politics are things we can't talk about, we can all <laughs> talk about the same book. So if you'll scroll down, uh, here are the instructions for use here, but you can see the actual cover of the book, how many copies we have. Um, there will be discussion questions, if Oprah's made it her discussion, the website she's put together. We tried to give you all kinds of accompanying materials, so if you want to choose that for your book club, we can get all that out to you and you can meet with your book club and just hand out copies of those while they're there. We can also interlibrary loan copies of books. However, I would just warn you, if it's a brand new book, we do have to wait for the popularity to die down or for it to fall off the bestseller list. And additionally, if you'll go back one, um, we've Sally Snyder, who works with young people here, has recommended some of these that are more appropriate for youth. So we do have some young readers book clubs or mother-daughter book clubs I've heard of in the States that you may want to choose from these. And it's the same, it's from the same list, but we have just used staff here. And there is the new one book for Nebraska kids for this particular calendar year. You may want to check that out. The library systems have 15 copies and we have 10 here. I'm going to wrap up with um, if the wiki site. Oops. These would be all the book clubs that are available throughout the state. Keep this in mind when you're starting a new book club and you want to show this to your leaders so that they can just have ready multiple copies. 
Okay, near and dear to my heart is the Books and Series website, which we worked with the Talking Book and Braille staff to get started. Um, they are often asked for the third book in this series, and so are we. The 15th book, the 18th book, my patron needs this, and you're out of your mind trying to figure out where all these lists come from. And if you're like me, you have to read them in order. So you can search by mm -hmm. author, or you can search by a particular title or a series title. For example, Ivanovich or Stephanie Plum. Um, she nicely numbers all of her series, so we know what those are. But this is a terrific website. It's really one of our most popular pages. And if your series isn't listed there, there is a place to contact us. It'll come directly to me, and we will get that added to the list. And last but not least is our Frequently Asked Questions page. And this is uh, something we work with very closely with Beth's team. Anytime we're asked a question more than three or four times, we look at each other and say, we've struggled with this before. That's a frequently asked question. And it becomes its own singular web page. And in the top sites used upon our web page are the state symbols, criminal records, foods that are uniquely Nebraskan, how old do I have to be to do this, that, or the other, and uh, maps. So they are heavily used. Please feel free to use them with your patrons as well. Lemon laws, all kinds of information is there that we've struggled to find good information on. So that is something that, again, my team works with another team. And that is our FAQ page, and we are nearly at 11. That's cool. Okay. Any questions from any of you? Anybody have any questions for Lisa or any questions for anybody um, who's here today? Anything else you wanted to know? Anything you wanted to have him elaborate any more on? You can either type in the text chat or you can use your microphone. If you do have a microphone, you hold down the control key when you want to speak and you'll be able to um, ask us a question that way. Is there anything else you wanted to know about? Okay, very quiet group today. I guess we've covered everything we possibly can for you then. Um, that will, uh, um, oh, Janet tells excellent first time. Thank you very much, Janet. We're glad. I think it was a success. Um, oh, and Jan there is applauding for us. Thank you very much, Jan. Oh, we got a few applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Um, if you do have any more questions, want to know more about any of these services, you do have the PowerPoint with URLs. Um, this last slide here, that is our staff directory website. You, we can get contact information for anybody on staff and the main 800 number here for the commission. Um, thank you very much for attending our premiere episode of Encompass Live. It has been recorded and will be available within the next day or so uh, for you to listen to um, if you wanted to um, revisit any of the things we have discussed today. And then thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So long, everyone.